Now, in the 21st century since the year 2000, the only country in the world that has tested a nuclear weapon is North Korea. However, recent developments around the world and some reports indicate that nuclear tests could resurface, and this is not good news. Especially after the Ukraine-Russia war, we have started to experience the nuclear tension we didn't want to remember, with reports of activity in long-abandoned nuclear test sites primarily by Russia, but also by other major powers. Russians have gone further by even voting in their parliaments to repeal international agreements that prevent the use and testing of nuclear weapons. At this stage, this vote does not necessarily mean that Russians will immediately resume nuclear testing, but it is an important sign that the process has begun. So, are we going to witness the resurgence of the most devastating weapons in history? The weapons of mass destruction and with the ongoing tragedy in Palestine and Israel. This possibility has certainly become even more frightening. For now, the agreement preventing all countries from conducting such tests is not a very strong one. Initially, the first agreement limiting tests was signed in 1963 between the United States, the United Kingdom, and the Soviet Union. According to this agreement, the testing of nuclear weapons in the atmosphere, underwater, or in outer space was prohibited, but it did not cover underground tests. Later, when we reached 1996, the Comprehensive Nuclear Test Ban Treaty CTBT was signed, encompassing a comprehensive ban on all tests, including underground tests. However, in this comprehensive agreement, we can still say there are gaps. 178 countries have signed and ratified this agreement, and it is in effect. But what's interesting is that China, Egypt, Iran, Israel, and the United States, even though they appear to have signed this agreement, have not fully implemented it. Yes, these countries have left a loophole, so to speak, India, Pakistan, and North Korea, on the other hand, are countries that have never signed this agreement. I'm sure many people are not aware of this. While most of us may feel at ease, because there is such an agreement, we can understand from this information that it is not a fully binding agreement, especially given the numerous instances and in history when powerful countries did not recognize agreements when it suited them. However, there is a reason we can feel at ease. Despite these loopholes, these agreements have proven to be effective. From the first nuclear test in 1945, known as the Trinity Test, to the agreement in 1996, more than 2,000 nuclear tests were conducted. Looking at the period after 1996, India and Pakistan, despite not signing the agreement, conducted a few tests in 1998, but since then they have, in practice, adhered to the agreement. However, there is one exception in the 21st century, North Korea. The sole nation that continued these tests conducted its last test in 2017. You may remember this, nevertheless. We must also mention that the political climate in the world is undergoing a significant change. Besides some internal conflicts and disputes, relationships that have been relatively calm for a long time have come to an end in the past few years. First, with the Syrian civil war and then the Ukraine-Russia war. The tranquility ended. In recent days, the situation has become disturbing, especially with the events between Israel and Palestine. In response to this, Russia initiated discussions to repeal the nuclear test bans. It had put into effect in the year 2000. And these discussions began with unanimous approval by all representatives in the Duma on October 17th with 412 votes. Moreover, this has understandably increased concerns in this regard. 
Vyacheslav Volodin, the spokesperson for the parliament, made a statement emphasizing that this decision is based on America's failure to fully implement the agreement and its irresponsibility regarding global security. As mentioned earlier, Russia has not completely lifted the bans and withdrawn from the agreement currently. It still appears as one of the parties to the agreement, however. This vote could also be seen as a warning from Russia. It could be seen as a signal that Russia, which has not conducted any tests since the last test of the Soviet Union in 1990, might resume these tests when necessary. Furthermore, as some may recall, Russia had tested nuclear weapon systems in recent months. Even though they were without nuclear warheads, these are serious signs, indeed. Additionally, there is a significant demand and inclination within Russia itself to resume these tests. Vladimir Putin, for instance, recently mentioned the need to test new weapons. Even though nuclear testing is not currently on our agenda, he said, if necessary, we should test how the new weapons will work. Of course, Russia is a topic about which we know a lot. As a matter of fact, all three major powers are simultaneously making similar preparations, according to a CNN report. There are expansion and modernization efforts underway. In the nuclear test areas in the Xinjiang region in western China, similar work is being conducted in Russia's test areas. In the Arctic Ocean and in the facilities in Nevada, United States. Experts also agree that there are indications suggesting that these three major powers are preparing for nuclear tests. However, according to some experts, despite this topic being on the political agenda of these countries, there is no rational explanation for conducting a nuclear test. The purpose of such tests is to understand the reliability of these weapons when they are first developed. Over time, this need diminishes and eventually, when the technology is deemed reliable, there is no longer a need for testing today. Many countries with nuclear weapons have computer simulation systems to assess the reliability and effectiveness of these weapons. Such simulations make physical testing unnecessary. Another perspective is that, especially when it comes to nuclear weapons like atomic bombs, while the technology may have evolved, the fundamental scientific principles remain the same. In other words, we still understand how they work. Although there's no need for us to try any more, there's a significant but here. I think we all know that. The reason these types of tests are back on the agenda is not for testing technology. In the current global political climate, Issues are hardly ever resolved logically and for the benefit of everyone. In fact, they often remain unresolved. In other words, if one day any country decides to test its biggest bomb, ignoring all international binding or non-binding laws and regulations we mentioned earlier, this could initiate a chain reaction. With this chain reaction, we could find ourselves returning to those dark days. When everyone was eager to display their most powerful bomb, it could turn into a strange competition of who can reach the farthest. Of course, the issue could lead to a showdown if the global climate doesn't calm down. And if one country decides to place a massive bomb on an aircraft or another delivery system to destroy its enemy, when we consider the horror of current technologies, it could trigger a stubborn confrontation, capable of wiping a significant portion of the world off the map. We don't mean to say it can happen, but we also believe that it shouldn't. At least, we should think about these possibilities and the horrors they entail. Even if we remember them repeatedly, I believe it's a good thing to consider these possibilities not to spread fear or anything like that. We need to think and remember because we can be forgetful. Because the horror of wars can sometimes be forgotten. 
It may even seem like a computer game, especially if it's far away. And if we're sure it won't touch us. We might even enjoy stoking a war that's happening somewhere else. But I want to squeeze in another terrible possibility that this likelihood could bring. We talked about simulations, right? Let's say a nuclear war broke out, of course. We hope it never happens, but let's say it did. Yes, the extent of this war would matter in such a scenario, considering the destructiveness of the war and what would happen afterward. One of the things to think about is what we call a nuclear winter. This is due to the radioactive material released into the atmosphere by nuclear weapons resulting in climate change, cooling, and similar effects. The changes in agriculture and livestock due to this scenario could lead to simulated simulations. In the worst case scenario, 27 million people die as a result of the explosions, and 255 million people die from hunger in the two years following the war. In the most terrible scenario, 360 million people die as a result of the explosions and nearly 5 billion people die due to the subsequent famine, isn't it terrifying? Is it possible? Unfortunately, it is. Can it be prevented? Of course. We know that no one wins in a war if people are not foolish. We also hope that nobody is foolish in a nuclear war. 